Mike Evans today signed a two-year, $52 million contract with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's $26 million a year. He's worth it. He's second-team All-Pro. Good for Mike Evans, future Hall of Famer. Going to be 31 next year. Another second-team All-Pro wide receiver, Brandon Ayuk, 25 years old. Did uh, his price just go up? What do we learn about what Brandon's going to command on the market? I definitely think Brandon Ayuk's number just went up. Um, mm -hmm. When you look at Mike Evans, he's an aging receiver, right? It's only a two-year deal. Um, he's a Hall of Fame player. Now, the market gets set, right? Now, Tampa Bay did a great job of getting it done now mm -hmm. because what happens is you set that market, every player that gets signed next wants more. Uh -huh. They're just going to keep stockpiling. And now you have guys like, I believe, C.D. Lamb. No, uh, Justin Jefferson needs to be signed. Uh, I believe C.D. Lamb. Possibly, I could be wrong on his contract, but Justin Jefferson is going to be the last person to sign. Yeah. Now, if you're the Niners, you want to get Brandon Ayuk signed before free agency starts. Why? Any receiver that gets signed on free agency is going to get overpaid. So This market is going to get stupid. Outrageous. Stupid. Unless teams may view it in the sense of, because I know it's a draft show too a little bit, teams yeah. may view the, the receiver in the draft True. A lot higher, so it may drop the market for receivers um, that are free agents. So I think that could benefit the Niners in a sense because you're not going to see people extend or re-sign players for outrageous numbers. Like, you know what? You could walk. I'll go. I'll go get a rookie. So yeah. for me, I think that's the most interesting thing is how do the Niners truly view Brandon Ayuk? Do they view him as that superstar, or they view him, or do they view him like a DeForest Buckner in the sense of yeah. a super high caliber player, mm -hmm. but I know this draft class has a player I could replace you with. I think that's what concerns me the most. Absolutely. And it's like, if, if his price tag is $27 million, $28 million a year, it's like, whew, that's franchise quarterback money almost. And it's like, do you even really throw it to him enough to justify that? That's the thing. It seems like with the Niners, they like Brandon Ayuk a lot, but they don't like him enough to give him 150 targets a year. And if all they want out of that split end X position is six, seven targets a game, then maybe they should trade Brandon Ayuk and get a guy in the draft. I mean, better not miss because Brandon Ayuk's really, really good at everything. But I mean, Vikings did it right. They traded Stephon Diggs, drafted Justin Jefferson. It all worked out. I also think it's bad if you don't sign Brandon Ayuk for your culture. Like, yep. to be honest with you, like he's true. He's the ultimate player in the sense of Kyle Shanahan threw him in the doghouse year one, year year two does Spot everything out. Kyle wants to do, um, turns into an all pro level player. Like that's what you truly want your players to do. Like when their adversity hits, how do you respond? I you can you can hold him up as, a, as an example to the every player after. Like, look, if I'm tough on you, don't worry. Look what happened to Brandon Ayuk. I was tough on him. Absolutely. And if you trade yeah. someone like that, it's like, what's the all right? What was the purpose of you treating them that way? Yeah. Um. So for me, I think he's he. You kind of have to bring him back. I think definitely think he's the caliber player. I think he should be hitting one thirty targets a year. I I per, so if you look at it, I know last time I was on your show, I was talking about the Niners passing attack down the field. Brandon Ayuk, record setting year for him. If you, I would personally future Brandon Ayuk as your number one, George Kittle as your number two down the field. Number three, I would probably go Jawan Jennings and then four Debo. So yeah. when it comes to that as your true receiver one. Yeah, you definitely got to resign Brandon Ayuk in the in the Super Bowl. If they use Brandon Ayuk as their receiver one against man, they probably yeah. win. Yeah, I agree. Um, what's interesting to, though is what Dave Merritt said about Brandon Ayuk. They had a little contempt for him. Ayuk's a really good player, but he's the youngest of the Niners' weapons, and he's a little bit of a hothead. Which is cool a lot of the time. I mean, he blocks hard. He's tough. He goes over the middle. Dave Merritt said all he wanted to do in that game was fight. That, maybe that's an maybe that's an exaggeration, but it's a funny thing for the winning team to say about a player like we weren't really ready, buddy. Well, it's also something that Kyle has kind of instilled in him, right? Like Kyle is kind of, if you look at Jennings, Debo, like their entire receivers, it's kind of a Kyle culture, right? Like they, yeah. you want them to block as hard as they can and, and kind of. Toe that toe that line where you don't get flagged, but you get in their head, try to mentality. The same thing why we saw George why we see George Kittle talk during plays. Right. Like, that's that Kyle Shanahan mentality or the culture that he's built, allowing his players to be who they are in a sense of it could be great for you or it could be bad in the sense of the team thinks it's funny. Like, oh, this guy's 
out of his mentality. He's wanting to fight everyone. Interesting thing, though. It's, yeah, it backfired yeah. on him. I think, like, in the regular season, it's cool because it looks like they're playing with joy and passion and intensity and all of that. Um, but in the Super Bowl, it came across as lack of focus. Yeah, in the biggest very game. arrogant. Yeah, and, like, I, before the Super Bowl, Brandon and I, you put out a little video, I think, on TikTok or Instagram or something, like, how to really fight in the football field. It's like, people aren't really trying to throw hands and da-da-da-da-da. And if you want, you got to go for the neck and yada yada yada. It's like, man, you should be not thinking about that. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, you think they were thinking about the right thing. Their coach was was drunk. Yeah, day. yeah, so like, allegedly, really... maybe. But, yeah, it was a bad look. So, yeah, like, you look, you, you can look at the whole thing, like, up to that Super Bowl. I mean, but I definitely the whole think... whole team the... needs to lock in. The price for Brandon you definitely went up. Had but the question is, Grant, is if you're truly trying to build a team, right? Your offensive line um is in a serious situation where you your whole right side is bad. Yeah. Um, I would include center in there as well. If you could get around pick 15 to from the Colts, who do like trading for Niner players who are all <laughs> pros, right? If you could get picked pick 15 and you could get an offensive tackle in that in this class when a very heavy offensive tackle class and then take receiver at 31 it's kind of enticing in the sense of you look at brock purdy right if he's truly the that quarterback it doesn't matter if he loses brandon Ayuk, in my opinion like if he's truly the niners truly believe brandon Ayuk, or brock purdy is the franchise quarterback they think he is brandon Ayuk losing him should not matter in terms of winning games or winning a super bowl you have george kittle christian mccaffrey you will still have Debo samuel and a young rookie so for me it's looking at it as like okay well you already have these great players on mm-hmm. your roster. Purdy should be able to carry you with one less weapon. To and a you're going to draft a wide receiver with pick 31 anyway. It's not like you're going to just have be, be down a guy. You'll try to replace him. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think Ayuk's worth in a trade? Because you have to pay for him. I don't think he's worth the top 20 pick. Like Teams are going to look at it like, okay, well, I have to pay. Turn around. I have to pay him. So why would I why would I trade you a first rounder yeah. in a heat receiver class? I think right. do I, how much more do I like you than this wide receiver I could get at pick 25? For a fraction of the cost. Exactly. I'd I have to like you way more. And that and that's interesting because teams do that. For example, for Stefan Diggs when you're in a win now mode, right? You could do it if you have a rookie quarterback, right? If you don't want to wait for that rookie receiver, or like a rookie contract quarterback, you don't want to wait for that rookie receiver to develop. Teams like the Texans, teams like the Colts, you could look at those teams and be like, hey, you know what? They have a young quarterback. They need a weapon to make him j- make that next jump. Um, but I-, I think he would get two seconds just because you have to overpay for mm-hmm. him. Like you have to give him that big contract extension. It just doesn't make sense for a team to give up a first and a deep receiver class. That's really interesting. So the topic started as started as how Mike Evans impacts Brandon Ayuk, but the real issue may be how this draft affects Brandon Ayuk. Like there may not be the market, the trade market for him, and he may not be able to really get $27, 28000000 million. Um, he might opt for the draft instead. 